Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm continuing my series on oncologic emergencies and talking about cord compression. Now, it's interesting to note that that spinal METs, METs to the uh, to the spine, around the spine, or in the vertebrae, are very common in cancer patients, and it's estimated that about 10% of all cancer patients have spinal METs. And uh, up to 90% of patients who die of cancer are found to have spinal metastasis at the time of death. So this actually may be an underestimate. Now, it's also interesting to note that at the time of diagnosis that actually 10% of cancer patients present with low back pain as their initial presenting symptom. So what does this mean for you as a provider? Well, if someone comes to you with new onset acute back pain, cancer should always be in your differential. Now, I said this before when we were talking about a PE, this does not mean that everybody that comes in with low back pain needs to get an MRI. But what it does mean is that if somebody comes in with low back pain, you need to be asking them other questions about cancer, like have you had significant weight loss? fatigue, a chronic cough, um, you know, changes in your bowel and bladder habits, um, and then also know about their history. Do they have a history of smoking or other risk factors for cancer? So, you know, you always have to have the suspicion for cancer in the back of your mind, even with low back pain, which is one of the most common, um, you know, complaints that, that uh, you may see if you work in primary care. Okay. So why is it that spinal and vertebral mets are so common in cancer patients? Well, the theory is that the area around the spine has a very rich plexus of a very rich vascular area that has a um, you know a rich venous plexus around it. And this sort of sets up cancer patients for hematogenous spread of metastasis. Um, so that's sort of the common, common theory. Um, now there's sort of three types of metastasis that can occur. We can have, you know, epidural mets, we can have mets to the vertebrae themselves, or we can have mets into the, uh, in, into the dura or into the spine themselves, which is actually the least common. So what happens after you uh, develop a, a metastasis to the vertebrae or the epidural space? Well, the first symptom is going to be pain. Okay, so pain almost always precedes any neurological dysfunction. Okay, so and then you know as it starts to progress into cord compression, then um, neurologic dysfunction dysfunction may begin to occur. Okay, so usually the first step is going to be pain just from the uh, um, met to the vertebrae or around the vertebrae, then it may progress to a neuropathic pain, which suggests that there is some compression and it may be from the nerve root. Um, then you, there may be a progression to motor dysfunction and there may be progression to autonomic dysfunction. Now, there are a few red flag symptoms that you need to be aware of. Um, so red flags, and these suggest that these are sort of true emergencies that, um, that need uh, an emergent response and an evaluation by a neurosurgeon. And these include bladder dysfunction, Uh, or sphincter disturbance. So this can be either um, you know in, incontinence or inability to void. Stat saddle anesthesia. And what does saddle anesthesia mean? This refers to uh, a feeling of numbness to the perineal and uh, and perineal area and buttocks, um, and then. 
Another is bilateral lower extremity weakness. So unilateral lower extremity weakness suggests that there is um, compression of a nerve root, but bilateral lower extremity weakness suggests that there is compression of the spine, so it's central. If any of these findings are noted, then an urgent referral to a neurosurgeon is, is warranted because um, a patient can progress to complete paralysis within one hour. Okay, so this is, is a true oncologic emergency if any of these red flags are noted. So now, if you have a patient with uh, acute onset low back pain and uh, you know other signs of cancer, the gold standard um, evaluation is going to be an MRI to evaluate for, uh, for a mass. However, you know, obviously if you see any of these red flags, you are not going to send a patient for an MRI because the, just sending the patient for the test and waiting for the results will take longer than you have. Um, so, you know, an MRI is, is what you would want if you have um, someone with some early signs of spinal metastasis, but it is not the, um, the action that you should take if you have a patient with impending um, or, you know, evolving spinal cord compression. Uh, you don't need an MRI then, you need a neurosurgeon. Okay, so enough said about that, um, and this was, again, a very brief introduction to spinal cord, uh, spinal cord compression, and I will continue my series on oncologic emergencies in my next video. See you there.